Okay, we've got a 2008 Suzuki Forenza here, and we've just recently developed an issue with a sinking brake pedal, a brake pedal that's, uh, you can tell, that's all of a sudden pushing down a little bit farther than it should be, and I'm going to show you what it looks like here. Okay, so we're inside the car here, and if I push on this, it's immediately going to push down. Now, if I start pumping it, it'll... It'll eventually come back up, but it's basically just falling down farther than it should. If I crank it here, it'll go even a little farther. With the booster, it'll definitely it's just immediately going to drop down a little farther. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to suspect is going to be this master cylinder, but we're going to come over here and take a look at it and make sure that we've got fluid in here so the fluids pretty full not real clean but it is full and we know that it has not been using any fluid so that's a good indicator that we don't have a leak somewhere now if you're still not certain about a leak you know you go around and physically verify that you don't have any leaks at your calipers on each wheel so um, I think it's pretty safe to say that um, that we don't have any leaks, but uh, you know, so you could check that as well. So there's really only a few things that can cause this sort of issue to pop up all of a sudden, and um, some of them are a little um, less less often to happen. But the you know you could have a problem with the ABS, but as you see on this car. We don't have any ABS. If you had ABS, you would see a hydraulic ABS block down there with lines going in and out of it. And uh, you could have an issue with that, but I usually don't see that on, uh, I see that more on common on Fords. Um, but it does happen, but usually the master cylinder is the first suspect. Now, another thing you could have it's rare, but you have a, a caliper that may be sucking air back in, but you can usually tell by pumping your brakes, and if it pumps up really, really quick, um, and you get that, that solid pedal back, then it's probably not gonna be the issue. So we're gonna go ahead and suspect that we've got a master cylinder problem, which is very common, and uh, we're gonna also test this uh, before we even take it off okay so we don't really need a lot of tools when dealing with this I've got a 13 millimeter socket with an extension to get the nuts loose on the master cylinder uh, we've got a, a 10 millimeter you don't have to have one of these um, but these um, flare nut wrenches are made specifically for taking these type of lines but a 10 millimeter We'll get the job done I've done it using regular wrenches you just want to be careful not to strip um, that fitting out in case it's extra tight now what I have here um, I've got a few sets of these uh, they came with another master cylinder and they're just plugs to block this off and I'm gonna hopefully find the appropriate size in here and we're gonna be plugging this off before we remove it and we can just double verify that that master cylinder is bad. It sh you should not be able to move that, um, that brake pedal when you mash on it. Of course, when you take the lines loose, you're going to get a little bit of air, so we're going to have to crack them loose, make sure there's absolutely no air, and then we'll check the pedal. Um, just for starters, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this connector here. Uh, just push down right there with your finger, give that a pull off. So we disconnect that connector, just tuck that back out of the way. Okay, the next thing I've done is tucked a towel down in here. Uh, this brake fluid is corrosive, don't want it getting all over the surfaces and the painted surfaces here. So we'll just put that down there to catch any little bit that drips out. Okay, so the, the next thing we're going to do, we've got the coolant tank here. Now, this is not going to be necessary in your case, but to be able to show you what I'm doing here to make things a little easier, because you can see you can get to these lines 
and the 13 millimeter nuts that are holding that without removing this but I'm going to be taking this loose and trying to just prop it back over here out of the way so I can hopefully show you what I'm doing so we got a couple of 10 millimeters here and we're just going to take and see if we can lift this tank up like we're hung on a we're hung on a wire there okay there got it up and off there you can see it snaps in over here you got the two hoses and we're just going to fold it um, it's probably not going to want to stay there so I'm going to get a bungee cord or some string or something and we're just going to hold it right over there out of the way now you may want to remove this as well just to make it easier to get in here because you can sure see how much room that makes but it's not entirely necessary all right so got that nicely out of the way okay so now we're going to take our 10 millimeter and just want to make sure you're going counterclockwise and those weren't too bad so we got that one loose. Go ahead and see how difficult this one's going to be. All right, so once they're loose, they're usually quite easy to to turn and we'll start getting a little bit of drippage there you can see but we got our towel in place now keep in mind why this is dripping it's introducing a little bit of air right there where that fitting's going in. So when I put my plugs, we're gonna have a little bit of air. So give you a false reading. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to utilize a helper to press down on the brake while we crack those plugs loose. We're gonna pump it up, have them hold it down, we'll crack them loose. And then we'll open it up or crack it open slightly and get the air. Out and then we'll retighten the plug. We'll do that a few times to make sure that we purge all the air. And now I'm gonna have to figure out just exactly what size plug's gonna go in here. I have no idea. I'm thinking it's this one. Okay, I think that one is gonna work. So be careful when, when working on this, do not get any of this on your paint. If you get it on your hands, don't be touching your paint. And let's see, I think this might just work but we're going to have to make sure that it's not going to leak so i'm going to get uh, figure out what size this is and snug this up a little more okay it turns out that this is a 13 as well and these are plastic so i don't want to get real carried away with it i want it to not leak but i don't want to just mess it up so I'm going to go press on the brake and just make sure that this is not leaking and then I'm going to test it and make sure that it is in fact this master cylinder here. We're going to crack these loose and get the air out a few times. Okay so the plugs are not leaking so what we're going to do is we're going to pump 
pump this. It's already pretty, pretty solid. We're going to pump this here, and we're going to hold it, and we're going to crack them loose till we make sure there's no air, so we don't get a false reading here. So we pump it. We hold the pedal. While we got somebody holding the pedal, we barely crack the screws loose there, get any air, and we snug them back. And then we repeat that process. But don't let off the pedal while you're getting the air out. Okay, I've got the pedal pressed down. So we're going to get a rag. We're just going to take a 13 and crack this loose. And we'll get any... And you can see the air coming out there. We'll do the same thing. And it'll just repeat that process. Like I said a few times, that one's getting no air was coming out that. So we'll just repeat this a few times, make sure there's no air. Okay, so I uh, was pressing the pedal, and even with the air out of here, we still have movement. And you shouldn't be getting really any movement at all it's the, like if you take this out and you you know bench test it you shouldn't get more than an eighth of an inch to be able to move that so i think we definitely it's safe to say that this is bad so we're going to go ahead and finish removing it at this point okay so the next thing is going to get my 13 down here we're going to get this loose here it's going to be tight and these are a self-locking nut And then we got this one, and we got one more on the other side there. Really nothing to removing it. Just don't want to replace something that don't need to be replaced. So you definitely want to, you know, if, if this thing was solid, then we'd know that we had a problem somewhere else. Okay, now we'll get this 13 on the other side. this one out this will just lift right out of here so I can since I've got this plugged off I can just pour the fluid up into a container I don't need to have to uh, extract it out of here back Let's see now that comes right out of there okay, and there we have that all out of there we're just going to go get our new one and we'll get it filled and you can actually see it looks like some it may have been leaking back in there Okay, so we're just going to get our new one out here. And we'll get this set in our container. Okay, so we'll just take these off. So a lot of times, you know, uh, you don't really need a bench bleeder kit. You can, what we're going to do is we're going to pour the fluid in here until it starts trickling out both of these not just one but both and what that's going to do is just through the gravity it's going to work the air out now you can we can push on the plunger there um, we don't even you know I like to push on something soft but we can push we can even push that by hand but the thing is we shouldn't be able Once we get the air out, we shouldn't be able to push it a lot. More than like an eighth of an inch, we'll put a mark on it. So we'll fill it out up to the max. And we'll just uh, gonna hold it a minute and we'll 
we'll just sit here and wait for it to start trickling it out it will start coming out okay it's trickling out a lot faster than I thought it was going to so you got to be ready for your plugs and like we did with so I got it running out everywhere like we did with the brake pedal we're just gonna push on this plunger right here I'm just gonna push it with my hand or I'll push it up against the wood there okay so said so I just plugged it off again now you could basically just put this in the car once you get it trickling out you need a way of uh, well you get you know you get it in the car and you get your lines on quick you kind of do need something to plug it with unless you're just installing it in the car you know fill it up let it trickle the same way and then get your lines on there quick so you're not making a mess but I've been uh, pushing what I'm doing here is just pushing up against this wood here and I'll hold it and then I'll just crack that loose to make sure there wasn't no air so you know we're gonna be bleeding the brakes because it's got old fluid in it but you could put this on there and crack those lines loose a couple times to get that air out the amount of air in there is going to be so minuscule that it's you could just basically go with it at that point but um anyways we've got very very little movement it's not even moving you know an eighth of an inch if that so you can tell that you know this is a good good master cylinder okay so we're going to go ahead and work on getting our new one back into place here like I said if you don't have these plugs I understand not everybody can probably find these then basically you just install it without the fluid fill it up let the fluid run out then get your lines on and you want to crack those loose one at a time make sure there's absolutely no air coming out of there <clears throat> I said and you will basically have 99 percent of the air out and be good to go but in in this case i'm going to completely go all the way and drain the fluid at each wheel uh, to get all the old fluid out okay now i've just finger tightened those and we're going to go ahead so i've got the towel here so I'd like to leave this, you notice how this is loose, okay? One thing this does is makes it easier to get your lines to line up. See, it's gonna start dripping out of there, so you wanna try to move with it. You should be able to thread this in fairly good by hand by wiggling it around. If you can't, then you've got it cross-threaded and you wanna stop what you're doing. Okay, so we're just going to get a wrench and finish snugging that down. And let's see. So we've got it started by hand. I'm not going to get it all the way tight. We're going to be cracking it loose. We just want to stop it from dripping. So once I get these where I know these are started, then I'm going to finish snugging this housing. We're going to snug it all the way down, tighten it up. So I just barely snug that up. We just want to stop the dripping. So now we'll just move back here, do the same thing, do one at a time, and we'll wipe up any spillage that we do have. So it's not eating paint up. So it'll start. Okay, and you can see, you know, you're gonna get some air in there. So you wanna make sure, you should be able to tighten that down by hand a good way. You can see this one's actually going easier than that front one. But you wanna get several threads 
started there. And then we'll get it get it the rest of the way down. Okay, that's good enough to stop it from dripping. Now we're just gonna finish snugging up our housing here. And that housing, you know, goes on the center. Pretty much can't put it on wrong. Just make sure that you get the center, that rod in the center there. Now I'm not gonna go by torque specs, but if I was gonna torque it, I probably wouldn't go more than like 15 foot pounds. 20 at the most, doesn't have to be that, that terribly tight. So I'm just snugging it down with a 3 8 So we got the housing tight. Now we're gonna, we're gonna get a helper and we're gonna do just like we did before, one at a time. We're gonna go press down on the brake, pump it up. We're gonna crack this loose. We're gonna do this about three or four times, whatever it takes to get the air out. Okay, so we got the pedal held down. We crack it loose. See, I'm not even seeing a lot of air with that one. Okay, so we'll check the back one. And I'm not really seeing any, any air. We're just going to do this a couple more times, make sure I don't see any air. You'll hear it squishing out. Okay, so we definitely want to make sure this stays completely full while we're doing this. Um, we just went ahead and snugged the lines back up. doesn't have to be just crazy. Just get them snug, make sure that they're not leaking. Go ahead and get that out of the way. And now we'll go ahead and while we're at it, we'll get our plug pushed back in here. And at this point, we're just gonna set our coolant. All we gotta do is set it back and put those two nuts back on. Okay, so we'll go ahead and Fasten this back down. Now we're gonna need to, uh, you know, put more fluid as we bleed them out, but we wanna basically get it until we see clean fluid coming out, brake fluid. Okay, so we got these uh, front wheels chalked. You always start bleeding at the back, the farthest most, which is gonna be your back passenger side. And I'm just lifting up under here, of course, you know, to use jack stands to be safe. And we gotta start getting this. You could probably do this without removing your wheel, but it's gonna be easier for me to kind of show you what I'm doing. This is a 19. And then you gotta pop this the rest of the way off. So we'll get something to pry that off with. And I've just got my flat trim bar here. I figure I could probably do the least amount of damage with it. All right, so that makes pretty easy work of that. Okay, then we're going to take our 19 and get these loose open. Okay, so with that wheel off, we can see this easily. You got a little dust cap. I'm gonna be using my little 10 millimeter flare nut. Um, 
But first of all, you're going to need a container. I just got a clear bottle. Uh, make sure there's a vent hole or there's uh, enough slack around your hose that it can get air back through there. Um, I think this is some 532nd, like 3 16 anything from like a 1 8 as long as it stretches will go on there. So we're just going to, basically we're going to start bleeding it out. We're going to have to add fluid as we're doing this and keep a close eye on it. But let's see if we can get this even loose here. Okay, so the same thing, we're going to uh, pump the brake, have somebody hold it, and we'll just start filling it here. Okay, so we're just working. You can see that dark fluid. We're just going to keep doing it until it's coming out clean. Okay, and I want to point out that you can buy these bottles, and as a matter of fact, if you get the fluid where it's up above here and hang this, you can pretty much do this yourself by just going inside because the air is going to go up and come through there, and it's not going to be able to suck air back in. Or if you get a vacuum, you can just vacuum out by yourself. Okay, I just want to show you how much I got out here. I'll show you this, that it's... You can see we got clean fluid coming out at this point. So we're just going to move, move ourselves over to the other side, over on the driver's side back there, and just do the same thing. Okay, so this is how much I ended up getting out of here to get all of the dark, murky fluid out. Now that doesn't take into account the fluid that was already in that master cylinder either. Remember, we put all new fluid in our master. That's just what was in the lines. So we ended up up here, like I said, you start from the farthest, the back passenger, you go back drivers, front passenger, and front drivers, and just get all that old nasty fluid out. <clears throat> so uh, we've, everything's feeling good. We're gonna go ahead and get this last wheel on here. And said, so just make absolutely sure that you're keeping this topped off to the max. I need to put a little bit more in there, but I was constantly checking that. You don't want that to get low or it'll be a nightmare. Right, let's go ahead and get this cap back on. Okay, so we all finished up with the master cylinder and getting the um, brake fluid all changed out there with clean brake fluid. And uh, the only other thing I noticed when doing this these rear brakes were bad so we're going to go ahead and change these uh, we've got some got some new ones here this is what you can see these are almost wore down this side's a little better so we're going to go ahead and get this side here replaced okay i'm using a 14 i've got an extended handle ratchet these are going to be pretty tight initially okay we'll just get this lower one Okay, let's go ahead and wiggle this off of here. We'll just kind of carefully set it up on top. Now you may need to tap these to get them loose. Here's to be some rust or corrosion. Got them sticking a little bit. See, that's not horrible. The other side looked much worse. You can see we got about mm, three sixteenths of an inch there. But you compare that 
to your new one, you can definitely see a big difference. So, let's take this other side. You can see this side is wore down probably less than an eighth of an inch. So, they don't look good and they're um, almost wore completely out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take and clean these up. Now you can pop them off and clean them up just over how you want to do it. Take your little wire brush and you just clean your lower and your upper. Get all that rust and grime. Okay, next time we're gonna pop this off here. I can tell it's moving pretty good, so it doesn't really feel bad. But we'll uh, clean this off. Get some clean grease back on it here. Now this is what I like to use. And pretty good stuff. Got you a little brush. Uh, once you get it cleaned up, just put us a good amount. Okay, let's get that back in place. Okay, now on to the lower. Well, like I said the good thing is that these do have grease on them. The concern is when these boots will get bad or you get some water in there, and that will start causing the problems. Definitely want to keep them greased though, because they can seize up. I've seen that happen. too much on there okay the next thing I'm gonna do is push this back I'm gonna push this piston all the way back now I've already accounted because I left some room in my tank my brake fluid reservoir so I've accounted for that so I know I'm fine now I could open up the bleeder and bleed it out just like we did the when bleeding the brakes, but I accounted for this. So I'm just gonna push this back. It is clean, fluid, but we could push it out the, the bleeder valve as well. But I'm just gonna push this back. But you wanna monitor your, your reservoir when doing this. You don't wanna be overflowing your reservoir. So definitely make sure to keep an eye on that. Push it all the way back and once we get this together we want to very first thing make sure we pump these brakes up and get them back solid okay I'm just gonna put an ever so light amount I'll do the back one and again, just an ever so light amount on those ends. Okay, with that pushed back, we can just easily push this right back on here. Now, these flat points turn to the flat point on this is the only thing you need to watch for. All 
All right, now we got our medium Loctite. We're gonna make sure we get this on here. And just uh, wiggle it till you get it to line up there. Absolutely, make sure you can thread it down by hand before you put a ever put a wrench on anything. So we're gonna leave that slightly loose. Okay, and I'm getting on the lower. And we'll line it up and thread it down as far as we can get it by hand. Okay, now we've got my torque wrench. We're going to just torque these 14s down to 20 foot pounds. And we'll get on the upper. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and get the wheel back on and we'll go pump these brakes up here. Uh, these uh, lug nuts, we're tightening these to 100 foot pounds, by the way. Okay, and for unchalking the car, like I said, we want to make sure that we pump those back up because those back pistons we push back with the C-clamp. I can tell that this is not moving much at all already. And we'll go up here and check the reservoir. And I can tell just by looking at it that we're right up to the max there. So we're good on that and it's nice, clean fluid. Now, another thing we we'll wanna check for, run your finger or paper towel under these fittings. Make sure you don't have any leaks there. You know, you want to get them snug, but you can actually ruin these if you over tighten them. So, you know, if it's still dripping, snug it up a little more, but, you know, don't get, don't get too carried away. And you'll definitely be able to tell the difference. If you can see here, I mean, this pedal with the, without it running is virtually not even moving at all. And even with the vehicle running, it's not going to move that far which I've seen way worse than this. This master cylinder was getting bad, but I've seen way worse than this before. All right, um, now I didn't show you the old master cylinder, but on top of that uh, brake fluid being really dirty, there was a lot of black like uh, debris settled down in the bottom of that old master cylinder tank. So very filthy. And you know, uh, that old fluid and all that debris, it's just gonna cause problems down the road. So anyways, um, that's gonna do it on this video, replacing this master cylinder and bleeding the brakes. And we got some new pads on the back there and this is uh, breaking really good now. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment if you'd like to do so. As always, I invite you to subscribe and I thank you for watching.